Hey, good afternoon. When I was the J3, they never let me come in here. Um, hopefully, we won't find out why. Um, I thought we were going to have a small little gathering in the dining room to have a round table to talk about this, but clearly this has kind of gone beyond that. So um, let me make a quick statement, and then I'll take some questions. Uh, I'm General Bob Neller. I'm the Commandant of the Marine Corps. And uh, you all know we're looking at allegations that Marines, specifically female Marines, have been subjected to cyberbullying, non-consensual sharing of images, and completely disrespectful comments made about them, presumably by other Marines. If these allegations uh, themselves, they undermine everything that we stand for as a Marine Corps and as Marines. Discipline, honor, professionalism, and respect and trust amongst each other. Um, we can't do what our nation needs us to do, which is fight and win and combat and in life. You know, we make Marines, we win battles, and we return better citizens back to our nation. That's our mission. So I don't know how many active duty Marines are involved in this or participated in this website, Marines United. I don't know the exact number of Marines that may have been targeted. I don't know how many active duty Marines participated or were witting to this behavior. Uh, the investigation that's ongoing will help us understand the scope of this. And I can assure you, if there's accountability to be made, those that are, are involved will be held accountable. For those Marines, that are watching this or listening uh, or may have been involved in this, uh, if you're participating in this type of behavior in any way, shape, or form, uh, you're not helping me or your Marine Corps. And, and I'd ask you to reconsider your participation in any sort of behavior like this. Um, you know, we, we claim that being a Marine is a special title and something that you earn. Um, there's honor here, but there is no honor in denigrating a fellow Marine in any way, shape, or form. So um, what are we doing about it? Uh, as I mentioned, there's an investigation by the Naval Criminal Investigation Service that's ongoing. Uh, I've directed uh, Assistant Commandant General Walters to form up a task force to take a look at uh, where we are, the investigation, and what other actions might be taken um, they'll be part of the assessment of the scope and scale of this with allegations of any activity on social media, but also take a look at any underlying cultural issues. Um, they're going to look at what's going on while developing plans for corrective actions and recommendations to policies, procedures, education, and training of Marines uh, that will prevent this in the future and, and the culture that, I'd say subculture that may have given rise to this. So I believe I've been pretty clear in all the things I've written. I think you've seen the message of the force I put out where I specifically stated. I didn't address this type of behavior, but I talked about other things that Marines have been involved with um, where they were destructive to them and, and to the organization, and that basically I said we needed to treat each other better. Uh, this was all before that. Uh, before this was before this these uh, allegations so I think I've been pretty clear on what the expectation is um, of Marines and I think I've been pretty clear what they should expect of leadership and of me so we'll address this like we've addressed any other issue we've had head-on um, we're going to be self-critical self-analytical but we also got to recognize that there's a problem and we got to figure out how to how to solve it. Um, but I would remind everybody that, that the overwhelming number of Marines, past and present, still live up to our core values of honor, courage, and commitment. And I'm sure um, they're as troubled by this whole thing as I am. So um, I'm ready to take any of your questions. Yes, ma'am. General, um, first, thanks for coming out and doing this. Um, how many women so far have come forward to, uh, pro to give sort of a formal complaint? So there are formal investigations going on. And have you taken any action so far against anyone, any sort of punishment? And then sort of a, a broader question. You said presumably 
other Marines. Do you believe other Marines have been doing this photo sharing? And what is your message to the women Marines? Um, first, you know, the number that we know of is less than 10 so far, but we would encourage anybody else who believes they've been involved in this to come forward. Um, the number of, of individuals that uh, the reporter, um, who I just, I'm kind of concerned about Skyline and Mr. Brennan because he's been threatened, which I find as disgusting and as sick as any of some of this other stuff, that somebody who would try to bring this to attention would be attacked by other Marines. Um, but uh, I think there were, uh, right now, I think uh, his evidence, I think, is, is around 30. Um, I'm sorry, what were they? Uh, how many are, are currently? There, there has been nobody charged at this time. The investigation is ongoing. Um, so, you know, we, we're going to find out what we find out. And then what's your message to, to the women in the Marine Corps who, um, there's, this is obviously, there's a lot of this going on online, um, in the internet, there, there's a lot of it everywhere. Some of it may be willing, some of it may be unwilling. What's your, what's your overall message? I'm going to ask them to trust us. Um, and I understand why that might be a bit of a reach for them right now. But I can't fix this. I mean, the only the way that there's going to be accountability in this is if somebody comes forward and tells us what happened to them. Um, I think you all know um, there's been a lot of discussion recently. I was on, uh, on a radio show yesterday where they were talking about social media and what the, I mean, the legal system is. There's some things that we're learning about this. Um, you know, if you post a picture, you know, you give a picture to somebody, is that consent? What's consent and all that? I'm not a lawyer. I got my lawyer here, and he's probably cringing that I'm even talking about this right now. But uh, that's part of the difficulty of, of getting to the bottom of this is because people believe, not just in the military, but in our society, that there's a certain level of anonymity in this and that they can freely take a picture of any of us walking down the street and post it and then ask everybody else what they think. And they can say things and then walk away. Um, but this is different. These are just tar these, uh, the, the, based on the allegations, you know, the, the individuals that were doing this were focused on a particular group and their, their purpose was to be, was to degrade for whatever reason whatever reason they had, that, that whatever it was to make themselves feel better, or I don't know. I, I'm trying to understand that. Jeff? Thank you, General. Critics have said that the Uniform Code of Military Justice is such that, as you mentioned, consent, if the photo was initially taken consensually, that doesn't rise to Article 120C. So I'm wondering, does the Uniform Code of Military Justice allow the strictest penalties in this case? Well. I'm not going to get into penalties and what the outcome is going to be, but and we talked about this. I, I think that's something that this task force is going to help us understand: is is what, you know, what can we do, what can't we do, and what needs to, potentially needs to be changed, so that uh, there can be better accountability and, you know, so that people might realize. Um, there are there are going to be consequences to this type of behavior, but I think that's down the road. If I could follow up, what have you <clears throat> observed about the internal dynamics of this group, Marines United? Apparently, there's been some internal disagreement over the past few months about whether this behavior was appropriate at all. I'm not a member of the Marines United, and I don't participate in their site, so I don't really know or am I interested in what their internal dialogue is. Sir? Are you aware of any other sites that Marines were using to exchange these uh, these kinds of photos? Am I personally aware? Uh, we've been out looking, and I'm, I'm not going to speculate, Mr. Morton, but my sense is there's probably others out there. And I think, um, and, and so we're, you know, as people come forward, hopefully more, 
and we'll find out more about about this and other sites that are out there. And is is uh, Mr. Brennan being provided any protection? Um, I'm not going to speak for Mr. Brennan. Um, I've spoken to him. He assures me that he's, uh, you know, he's okay and he's got. He's informed the appropriate authorities as to what the situation is. Sure. Two questions real quickly. Yeah. Um, will any women Marine officers serve on the task force? And you talked about accountability. What will the consequences be given the difficulty you're having? You know, we formed up the task force a couple of days ago. Um, I'm pretty confident there will be female Marines. You know, I'm going to meet with them later today. And we're actually having a meeting with all our commanders and their senior enlisted to kind of just give them an update as to where it is. But as far as what's going to happen, if what, then this, I'm, you know, that's something that, you, that I'm not going to do um, because that's not, you know, a commander never goes out and says, if you do this, then this. So I don't, it's because I don't know enough about what's going to come out of the investigation other than our goal is to. Uh, if there is accountability to be to be had, we'll make that accountability. Be clear, no women on the task force. Will you expect them to be? Oh, there, I expect there will be. I just don't. You know, when I've talked to General Walters, he hadn't said. You know, there's a list. Give me a list. But uh, I know that there's a number of female Marines that are working for General Glenn in public affairs, and they've been part and parcel of all the discussions we've had about the statements, and have been very helpful to me to help me frame uh, the bigger situation. You've just sent 400 Marines to Syria. Can you talk about what kind of impact these actions, these alleged actions by other Marines could have on them and how this can be used as propaganda in the fight against ISIS? I'm not going to talk about uh, ongoing operations. Um, I'm pretty confident that those Marines are focused on what their mission is and, uh, you know, if anything, you know, they're, they're focused on getting on where they need to do and doing what they have to do and what their mission is. As far as any other organization, in today's world, any time somebody uh, has issues, there's always somebody that's willing to step up and use that as a way to, to degrade or, or disparage that particular organization, whether some group like ISIS or anybody else is going to do that, I don't know. There's now a second group, Marines United 2.0, that seems to be in defiance of you, continuing to post these pictures. What does Marines United 2.0 say about your ability to address this problem? I don't know what United Marines, Marines United 2.0 says or doesn't say, and quite frankly, I'm not interested. But, I mean, I think the example is where the problem is. Because after this was identified, we went to the provider and asked them to take it down, which they did. And so now we're into this, the, 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 the ability in this domain to move around and, and hide under the cover of darkness and, and not to uh, stand up and, and be somebody of substance, I think that speaks for my opinion of this organization. And you, you spoke earlier about, you know, underlying cultural uh, challenges in a subculture. To what extent is this a cultural problem within the Marine Corps? I think we're going to find out, you know, what what degree this is in the organization. But I mean, uh, I'm not qualified. I'm going to talk about this. I'm not going to lay this off on anybody else, on the society or anybody else. I mean, okay, but because this is our problem and I own it. We own it. Um, so, um, we have a culture we believe in, uh, and if there's people out there that they aren't going to buy in 100% to that culture, then we probably need to have a conversation. Yes, ma'am. Sir, could you talk about motive a little bit? Do you think the motive behind this was to intimidate female Marines, particularly given the debate within the Marine Corps last year about expanding all combat positions to women? You know, I don't know what their motive is. You'd have to ask them. but. Regardless, you know, I, I, I guess we've talked about this, and I'll give you my, my personal opinion. Whatever your opinion is on that, okay, we can have a discussion about that. But I don't see how you get from that to where you feel that it's going to help your, your argument or your position on that to take a picture of another Marine, post it, and make negative, degrading comments about it. I mean, 
I mean, I, how do you get from A to B? And so that's that's what I'm struggling with. Following up on your comments about underlying cultural issues or, or subculture, what concrete steps do you anticipate the task force will take to ask those questions? And you know, what specific answers are you looking for? I think first we want to make sure that the victims are provided appropriate support and services. Um, second, we want to make sure that we follow the investigation and we can get to some sort of uh, understanding of what's going on and, and if you know who's involved and, and what's going on um, you know the sergeant major we're, we talk about our culture all the time um, and again if you go back to the message of the force that was done after the first of the year I'm talking about our culture I'm trying to define what I think that culture is and trying to make people understand that there is a certain way that we expect you to behave and to live your life and serve as a marine and so um, if there are those that think that, that they've got a better way, then we're going to have to talk about that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I know what I don't know yet about that, but we're going to try to dig into that. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, General. Is there a time frame for the task force, any kind of deadlines? Um, no, not that? yet. Again, we're less than a week into this. And, you know, it'll, in, in the investigation is the investigation. And we're there to support the investigation, and they will, uh, I don't know what, what their timeline is. I mean, I'd say, you know, we don't, we don't want to be in a hurry. We want to make sure we're thorough and we're, we're within the law, and uh, we'll uncover things as we go along. And should female Marines feel comfortable in coming forward, especially in the face of any sort of career retaliation or peer retaliation? Anything I've ever read or heard about on the social media bullying, there, you know, you're always at risk as far as somebody else. From the institution, no. I mean, I'm, I'm going to make sure that, I mean, if you come forward, the, the chain of command is they're, they're obligated and, and required by order, rule, and regulation and by my direct direction to make sure that they're protected and that, uh, again, because I know, you know, I know it's a stretch for me to ask them a little bit this time, but um, I want to believe that uh, they believe that we're going to do all we can to get to the bottom of this, and I need their help. I need everybody's help, not just women Marines. I need all Marines. This, an effect, this affects them directly, but this affects the entire organization and our alumni and our reserve component. Last question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sir, uh, when did you first hear about these allegations? Was it when the report came out, or had you heard rumors beforehand? I mean, the timeline is toward the end of January, almost the end of January. We, we were contacted by uh, a reporter who told us about this, and then we engaged with him, and, and he came forward with enough information that we felt that it was a credible thing. Uh, the day after that, we went to the service provider, and we had the site taken down. And then we continue to engage, and then, then we can be in the investigation. And then we worked with the individual uh, as, as, as he was getting ready to release his story. I'm looking at Jim Glenn over here. I think that's accurate. So, so we were aware of it for some time, and we knew that he had a, a, a point where he was going to release the story. And, um, and so we were, I think we had, try to engage uh, certain people in anticipation of the release of the story. And uh, so now here we are. I Have you spoken to any of your, uh, your fellow uh, service chiefs uh, about that, or have they expressed any I, concern? All the service chiefs and the chairman, they all know what's going on. Um, in fact, CNO asked if he wanted me to, if I wanted him to come down here with me. Yeah, I said, no, you, you, I got it. This is, I got this one. I do one more. Thomas, I'll get see you in the back. Fellow, I got to call on the Marine back here, so just so you won't get upset with me later. Uh, you know, with all due respect about the timeline, sir, uh, thanks for doing this, by the way, but the, you know, there were reports of these misogynistic websites, uh, 2013, 2014, I believe Marine Corps Times and Task and Purpose reported on it and was indicative of this, of this subculture. So I'm wondering, 
why did this incident prompt such a, a heavy response uh, as a side to maybe tackling it beforehand because this has been pretty well known and then second I mean you talk about the subculture but I'd really appreciate in your words as the Marine Corps top officer you know what that subculture looks like to you you know I I don't have a good answer for you I mean I give you a lot of reasons but they'd sound like excuses I remember when all that went down with General Amos and everything and and quite frankly I, I don't you know as an individual and maybe that's a failing on my part I mean I've got we got folks that track this stuff and we're looking at this stuff but on a day-to-day -day basis the United States Marine Corps is not out there looking for you know sites that um, you know we're looking for people who may do certain things but I you know I if you'd asked me a week two or three weeks ago you know what you know what's my number one concern it wouldn't be looking for websites where Marines are allegedly posting pictures of other Marines and making you know degrading misogynistic objectifying comments you know I, I kind of thought we were getting ready to modernize the force address our readiness you know go here go there you know, I was, I was going to go to Norway this weekend see a bunch of Marines above the Arctic Circle up there training and doing all this stuff that I think the great great majority of us came in the Marine Corps to do you know travel do challenging things get ready to go represent our nation um, so instead, I'm going to be up on Capitol Hill. I got it. So I, I don't have, a, I don't have a, a good question as to why after this original thing. I, I think we learned something. I mean, I, think, I don't think we walked away from it. I think we realized, and I think if you read anything I've re written or anything I've said or been anything that I've talked about, you know, kind of the, the, the self-destructive behavior, mostly revolving alcohol around Marines that leads to other things. But... I'm thinking back, you know, I mean, why wouldn't I talking about this? I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't have a Facebook page, okay? I don't do social media, all right? And that's maybe my mistake. On the subculture thing, um, I don't know, you know, what group or particular demographic in the Marine Corps is involved in this. I don't know if they think they're helping us. I don't know if they think that, you know, they're going to fight some fight because they think that they got a better idea. Um, I don't know if this is something they're doing to try to increase their rep because, you know, they're, they may or may not have been in combat or want to go to combat, and so they got to get creds on this group. I, I don't know, Thomas. I, I mean, I'm hoping maybe I'll run, I'm going to go down to the gym like, hey, who, somebody come out and talk. Tell me why, what, you know, get some explanation because, you know, I'm, I'm, generation, I'm generationally challenged here, all right? Um, you know, my, you know my, my children help me try to understand this stuff. And, and uh, you know, when we read the news and watch this stuff, and, but, um, but now it's okay. It's, it's right dead center. It's right in front of me now, so like, all right, you know, you got to get, you got to understand the threat, understand what's going on, and and maybe the, I'm hoping the Marines when I come down there, when I go around, I you know, talk to them, and like the Marines here have spoken to me, but it's not just it's not just on social media. I think, I think, um, you know, and we've been fighting for 15 years, you know. Men and women, side by side. Okay, and, and women, they did, their, they did their thing. And I don't know what else they got to do to, like, say, yeah, okay, good to go. I mean, we all bring something to the game, right? You know, he, General Glenn's battalion was up at uh, Barwana, and they were doing a checkpoint. And the Sergeant Major was killed up there with a couple of female Marines that were manning the checkpoint where the women, the Iraqi women, would come through. So, I mean, how much? So, what do you got to do to get in? What do you got to do to get in? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, they just want to do their job. Let them do their job. And you do yours. And you know what? It'll all work out. But this is not the way. And if you think you're helping me or the institution, I don't need your help. 
this way. I do not. I got enough problems. I need you to help me in other ways. I need you to be good people, men and women of character and virtue. I need you to get your GCT score up so you can go to college or become an officer. I need you to read all the books on the commandant's reading list. I need you to improve your PFT score. You know, like I said, I need you to, you know, uh, read more, drink less, and PT smarter. Okay? That's what I need you to do. And if we all do that, it'll be good. It'll be good. This is not helpful. Okay, thank you very much.